Ian, it's absolutely lovely to see you again here at Collector Mania. How are you enjoying it so far? Uh, very much, very much. It's been uh, a good day. It's been nice and steady all morning. People have been lovely. And uh, as usual, they've come from far and wide, which is great to see. So it's been very pleasant. Now, it's been a dramatic season three for you and for everyone. First of all, what was your reaction to the red wedding when you saw it? Well, you see, I knew because I'd read the books. So uh, I wasn't kind of like, you know, gutted or gobsmacked, really. I knew, I knew it was coming. It's still very shocking because, you know, especially the Stark family, the sound about the Stark family, you've identified with them from the beginning. You've believed that he's the bee's knees and, you know, he's the noble man and lo and behold, he kills them off in book one. So then you assume, well, surely the rest of the family will somehow, you know, carry on and, and, and be impressive. So when they get wiped out like that, it's quite, you know, shocking, really. I kind of feel and hope, I mean, I don't know, because none of us knows. I kind of feel and hope that the Starks, in some form or another, have a positive end to this whole saga. But who knows at this stage? Who knows? Because no one's safe, aren't they? Anything no. could happen. I mean, you've had a dramatic season as well on Game of Thrones. Yeah. How have you felt about what's happened with Barristan this, this season? Well, um, now, of course, I've got to be careful here. We're talking about season three, yes, so I've got to be careful about that. Well, it's great, first of all, that he's back. Uh, I mean, again, I, I knew that because I'd read the book, so I was delighted about that. It's great to be back in a series where so many people don't come back, you know, but uh, what his future, what everybody's future will be, of course, is yet to be known. And uh, we've had a dramatic time uh, cutting us way through... Essos, as I think that country is called, um, and who knows, you know, how long before we get our act together and manage to get back to Westeros. But you know, we're, we're currently we're making our way through Essos, and we'll see where we end up. Now, if you could give Barristan some advice of how he should act in future, or what he should keep doing or not do for future, what would you say to him? I think Barristan should probably follow his current agenda, which is to be loyal. Uh, supportive, discreet, um, and uh, you know the honourable man. Because in a sense, I mean, he he is cut of that cloth. He is the honourable man, and and I trust will remain so. You know. Now, where he is at the moment with Danny, he's of course also with um, Jorah Mormont. Yeah. What do you think he makes of him exactly? Because I feel like there's something there. There's a bit of sort of a little bit of tension, maybe. There's the potential for that, certainly, because uh, Barrison obviously knows uh, Jorah's history. Um, and uh, I guess in some ways he would not approve of Jorah. And in some ways Jorah might certainly be wary of or mistrust Barrison. They seem uh, to be able to get along, you know, in the presence of Danny. And I see no reason why they shouldn't. But there's possibly enough kind of like under the surface that who knows, at some point it may come through, come to the fore. But we'll have to wait and see. We will, won't we? Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> now, we talked about how no one's safe and those deaths on the Red Wedding were incredible, but there have been so many amazing exits on Game of Thrones, haven't there? Yeah. If you had to have a dramatic exit, a stage death, how would you like to go out? I'm trying to work out what my exit will be. I mean, I think I've got... Well, first of all, I've already had an exit, which was fairly dramatic. But um, what my next exit will be, I don't know. I could die in battle because, after all, he is a, a fighting man, and that would seem appropriate. I might make it through to even older age. Uh, or who knows, I might make it through to being what I once was, being again what I once was, which is commander of the Queen's Guard, but back in Westeros. Who knows, these things are to be discovered and none of us knows, because George hasn't even written it yet, so none of us knows. But um, fingers crossed, uh, he, he will carry on for a while. I guess, you know, if a fighting man's going to go, he should go fighting. You know. I mean, there has been a little sneak peek that George has given um, audiences to the next book, which he's written a certain amount of. And yeah. um, if you realise, this, this, um, Barristan's got two point of view chapters in that. What do, yeah. you, what do you think about that? 
Well, I'm delighted about that, obviously, you know. Um, and in a sense, it's kind of not surprising because that character is it's growing in influence, you know what I mean? And um, I mean, traditionally, it's, very, it's kind of interesting. If you, look back, if you look back to series one, although he was part of the council, you never saw him in any of Baratheon's council meetings because he yeah. was, I mean, he's essentially, you know, he's a, he's a soldiering man. He's interested in being out in the open, out in the air. He's not really interested in sort of like sitting around in council meetings. That was his world. But as time goes on, he is, I think, partly because he's now with Danny, partly because she's young in years, but not necessarily young in sense, uh, he may feel that he has to play more of a counsellor role. And, and so I think it's kind of not surprising that perhaps he starts to have that kind of standing, if you like, in her world. But where it will lead and how long it will continue like that, who knows, you know. <laughs> And we talked a little bit about deaths on the show. You said how you'd like to go out in battle, but what do you think have been the best deaths that they've had on the show so far? The most mind-bogglingly amazing ones? <laughs> oh, I don't really know if I can answer that, to tell you the truth. Uh, I mean, you can't, it's very hard to go beyond the Red Wedding at the moment, to be honest. You know, I, I mean, the battle scenes in, 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 in Blackwater were, were, were fantastic. But I guess because the Red Wedding was full of so many people with whom you had identified so strongly personally and, and, and full of characters from the family, which is probably the family that, in my head, I think is like, you know, one of the, if you like, the repositories of honor. That was tough, you know. So seeing those people go, I think that's still got to be the toughest, you know. I mean, if you could put anybody on the throne, who would you like to see on the Iron Throne at the end of the day? Obviously, we don't know who it's going to be because George hasn't finished the books yet. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, in, from the point of view of my character, it has to be Daenerys because that's who I'm now with. And certainly it would seem at this stage that it's shaping that way. I have a suspicion, though, that Jon Snow, uh, you know, there's a different story there. Jon Snow is not who he appears to be, and, and I think we'll learn something interesting about Jon Snow and where exactly that places things in the balance. I don't know, and what George has up his sleeve because of that, I don't know. But there's definitely, there's definitely a story there somewhere. You know, definitely a story, and many questions yeah. as well. Um, if you could see anything happen with the dragons, who we've had some quite interesting action with last season, what would you like to see happen with the dragons in future? I'm kind of wondering how big they're going to get, you know, and how we're actually going to fill them with them when they get that big. Uh, I mean, are they going to be jumbo jet size before they're done? And uh, are we going to be doing serious CGI with them? I don't know. Um, also, I guess the other big question is, are they going to be uh, indefinitely uh, as biddable as they currently are? You know, because as they get bigger, one presumes they will get more independent, and who knows where that will lead. Um, one thing you can be sure of, as long as she possibly can, uh, she'll hang on to them, because basically that's, that's our strength, if you like, is that we are fortunate enough to have dragons. Our problem is also that we happen to have dragons, you know, because they may bring they may bring issues as time goes on we will have to wait and see on that one too